Hello and welcome to Grow3D. If you are new to procedural texturing in Blender, an issue you may struggle with is how to generate a diversity of pattern to make different sorts of material. There is this powerful yet simple node setup that you can use to generate a huge variety of patterns. In fact, I say probably even an unlimited amount of patterns. And if you have watched any YouTube tutorials on procedural texturing, you may have even encountered this particular node setup because it is used as a basis for a lot of different procedural materials. Personally, when I was learning how to make procedural materials, my biggest improvement came from understanding how this node setup works. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about what this node setup is and how this node setup works. All right, delete everything, add a plane. Before we get started, make sure you have your Node Wrangler turned on because we'll be using a lot of Node Wrangler shortcuts. So just go to your Blender preference under the add-on, type in Node, as you can see, I already have it turned on here. Go to your shading tab. What I like to do is I like to turn the wall opacity to zero. This way we still get the lighting from the background but we don't get the distraction. Assign our plane and material. Press 7 on numpad to view it from top down. Now if you click here, I'm going to use a noise procedure texture as an example because it's one of the most commonly used procedure textures. So shift A to add a noise texture. So for those who are new to procedure texturing, basically what you're doing when you're procedure texturing is creating patterns mathematically. So think of this noise texture node as an algorithm and all these are the input that you're feeding in to the algorithm and the image that this node outputs are the results of all these inputs that they put in. So let me just show it to you. So hold Ctrl and Shift and click on this node to preview it. This is part of the node wrangler shortcut. Let's, okay, let's clean up our workspace. All right, as you can see, it's quite blur, so to view it better, just add a color ramp so we can just visualize the changes better. Uh, move the black slider up a little. Alright, there we go. Another thing to do is, with your mouse over this texture, press Ctrl and T. This is another node wrangler shortcut that will add a mapping node to your texture. There we go. I like to use object, but it doesn't really matter because we're just mixing. All right, so as you can see, the noise texture node itself has quite a good amount of parameters you can play with to create a variety of patterns. So, you know, more noise, less noise. You want detailed noise. Less detail, detailed noise. Even more detail distorted noise and you can actually do quite a lot with just these but there is a huge limitation is that no matter how you tweak all these parameters you are still going to end up with a noise that looks kind of cloudy because that's pretty much what the algorithm does here's where this particular node setup comes into play what we're going to do is we are going to fit in another procedural texture into the vector of this noise texture so we can use the other procedural texture to influence how this image look, how, how the noise texture looks like. So let's say in this example, we want to add a musgrave, right? Musgrave texture. Let's just preview it to show you how a musgrave looks like. So this is how the default musgrave texture looks like. And this is, well, this is how our noise looks like right now. In fact, let's just reset the noise so we can get a default noise it's easier for us to compare, basically. So this is a default noise texture. So if you add the Musgrave texture between the mapping node and the noise texture, this is what happens. You're gonna, as you see, as you remember, the Musgrave texture looks like this. Noise without the Musgrave looks like this. So when you add the Musgrave texture here, you are essentially adding the influence of the Musgrave texture onto your noise texture so it creates a combination 
like this. So that's kind of cool. That's already a whole new set of patterns you can play with. It's really a whole set of patterns you can play around with. But there is still one big limitation, and that is the fact that it's binary. You either have the influence of the Musgrave, or you don't. So it's either this, either 100% influence from the Musgrave, or 0%. That is quite limiting, because when you're talking about generating a huge variety of patterns, sometimes you want maybe 90% influence, sometimes you want 10% influence or 20% influence, right? So the solution to that would be to use a mix node. So search for a mix node, mix RGB, not mix shader, that's two different mix nodes. All right, for those who are new to procedural texturing, let me just show you what the mix node does. So if I were to control shift and click on this to preview it, right now it's seeing nothing. Let me just set the two colors. So basically, what the mix node does is this. When the factor is at zero, it, it will be a 100% color one. When the factor is at one, it will be a 100% color two. And anything in between is a mix between those two colors, right? So let's say, for example, if, uh, if I want this to be, uh, let, let's try a different color just to show it to you. So let's say I have blue, right? 100%, I mean, at factor one, it would be just color two. But as I go to closer to zero, it will blend in more of color one. And at zero, it will be 100% color one. So this is what the mix node does, basically. It mixes the two colors based on how much factor you put in. So let's cancel this up. Let's reattach this back to our noise. What we're going to do is that we are going to place a mix node here and here. We're gonna use the mix node to control how much influence our Musgrave texture would have on the noise texture. And the way you set it up is like this. You set the Musgrave texture to color one. And for color two, you're gonna just connect it to the texture coordinate. And then you're gonna connect the mix node to the mapping node. So what this setup does is basically, okay, let me just show it to you. As you Remember, this is what happens when we just attach the Musgrave to the noise with nothing in between. This is with 100% influence from the Musgrave, which is the color one. So right now the factor is at zero, so it's 100% influence on color one. But as you drag the factor up, you can see the influence from the Musgrave actually disappears. So at factor one, essentially what is happening is that it treats it as if this doesn't exist. So it's as if this is connected to this and connected to this directly. So the Musgrave texture is evaluated as if it doesn't exist. So this is how, this is basically the node setup that we use to control, to mix two different procedural textures together, basically. And this is, I know this seems simple, but this is what allows us to create a huge amount of variation in our patterns because like look at this alone like by varying this we are able to create like you know so many different kind of looks so in here for example let's say if we want to make our noise look more oily maybe something that looks like you know dry oil or dry water and metal right so we obviously can't make it with just the noise alone because there's nothing in here that will Kind of give you that look. So we're gonna use a bit of the Musgrave. Okay, we just need a little bit of it. And as you can see, the Musgrave has a little cool feature where you can kind of distort things. If you ramp up the detail of the Musgrave, okay, let me show it to you again. So if you ramp up the details and you reduce the dimension, it creates a kind of, yeah, this kind of fractally kind of image. And if you use this, if you mix this in into your noise texture, there you go. See, you don't need a lot of it. You just need maybe, yeah, 0.10. There you go. Your noise texture has transformed into a whole different texture. And this is what I mean by, you know, you see, playing around all this and the factor allow you to create a whole variety of textures that you can create with just one single procedural node. 
It may sound like a hyperbole when I say that you can create an unlimited amount of pattern with this setup, but in fact, the variety of patterns you can create is so huge that it's pretty much limited by your knowledge and your imagination. So I'm just gonna give you another example, like in another procedural setup, I like to use that uses this particular setup where I use a Verona texture, the color of the Verona texture, which is something like this, add it in the color ramp. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna get rid of this for now and get rid of this. So this is how yeah, the basic Verona texture looks like. The basic color of the Verona texture. It's very important, not the distance, the color. So if I were to add some noise, for example, if I were to mix in some noise into the Voronoi, this is what I'm going to get. You see, the edges of the Voronoi starts to blend together and voila! Now you have something that looks like paint work and I like to use this to kind of texture a lot of more stylized stuff to create a base texture for a lot of more stylized stuff. So yeah, I mean, this is what I mean. Just play around with it. Blender has tons of procedural textures that you can use to com combine with. Sometimes you can able to combine two noise, two Voronoi, or just whatever, just play around, man. I mean, there's so much you can do with this particular setup. And in fact, this setup is used by a lot of uh, tutorials to create the base of their procedural textures. You know what? Let's make a quick Dune texture. This Dune, not Danny's Villeneuve's Dune. Unfortunately, we can't procedurally generate Denis Villeneuve's Dune yet. But let's use this technique to create a procedural Dune texture to show you how powerful this particular setup is. Alright, so let's just clear up all this and start from a scratch. So, the most obvious procedural texture to use would be the wave because I'm trying to make something look dune-like. So the wave texture looks like this. And then Control T to add the mapping, change it to object. As you can see, the wave texture itself already has a whole lot of parameters you can play around with to create lines that looks like dunes. So first I want to reduce the scale because it's a bit too tight together. And you can use something like a distortion to as you can see, to make your lines wriggly, so it looks a lot more organic. So we just add a bit of distortion. The details will make the line kind of bleed out more. So it will be very useful when you add it to a bump map or displacement. It will create a graduation. And detail scales, of course, plays around with that. The detail roughness, let's increase it a bit. Now, there is one limitation though. No matter how much you tweak all these parameters, let's say you can't really, okay, there's nothing you can do on the wave texture node alone that allows you to kind of bend all your waves to create a curve. As you know, the dunes are not perfectly straight because, you know, if, if it's perfectly straight like this, it doesn't look natural, right? You want it to curve to look natural. So here's where we use a, where we mix in a Musgrave node. Let's just get a Musgrave texture out. As you remember, a Musgrave texture looks like this. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna scale it down so we can get some curve and we're gonna fit this curve into the wave texture. All right, so let me just return it back. So let's set up the node mixing Combo that we've learned. Jack into here, into here. Wave texture. All right, so this is with zero Musgrave texture influence, right? Now, I know it doesn't look much, it doesn't look like it's curving it when you add some Musgrave. That's because right now our Musgrave looks like this. If you reduce the scale to one, right, you're gonna be able to introduce all these curves into your wave texture. So let's see how this looks like on the wave texture. So there you go, see? Now we're getting some curves to make our, our dunes look a lot more 
organic and natural. It looks as if a wind blew it rather than being made by some procedural texture. So, alright. Um, I'm just gonna quickly throw in some details to make it look like dunes, but you get the gist. This is what the ability to mix procedural textures allow you to do. It allows you to basically it allows you to change the pattern in a way that you can't do with just a single procedural texture. So in the next part of the video, I'm just going to speed through how I'm going to texture this simple dune. Drop a like and subscribe if you have found this video to be useful. Otherwise, just enjoy and I hope you have learned something from this video. Thank you.